scary the night, but no place to hide. And one piece of bread means the whole world to me. So much of pain, on whom do I count? Lost and alone, but who? It was a cold December day on the street of Kathmandu. I was nine years old and my sister six. My mother had an epileptic fit and she fell in the street. People started to gather around us. Some were even laughing, thinking it was a performance, but she was suffering. I begged for help, but nobody really cared. I was hopeless. I could do nothing at that point then to hold my sister, who was crying out of fear, while my mother lay unconscious beside us. The city was new to us, and we were all alone in this world, being rejected by our family. Now, it wasn't always like that. Just a few months before, I was a really happy child, growing up in a beautiful village, grazing the animals, roaming in the jungles with my friends, and helping my parents in the farm. Carrying out these wet rice seedlings and passing it to the women as they cultivated, learning and imitating from the uncles as they tilled their land with a melodious song. There was this joy of growing the food and having enough to eat. But here I was in the street, all alone, begging and searching in the task can for food. Now, you might wonder how we came that far. A year before, my mother started to have an epileptic fit. Instead of taking her to the hospital, which was far away, she was taken to the salmon, and her condition started to be worse and worse. People in the village thought she was possessed by some kind of evil spirit, God knows what. And they wanted us out from the village. Tired of all this kind of accusation, my father brought us to Kathmandu and left us there. Four months of life in the street was really harsh. I understood the real meaning of hunger, homelessness, and helplessness. I would always pray for this to be over, and my prayer were heard through Rokpa's help. Rokpa, an organization which support street and orphan children in Nepal. They carry numerous other projects to support people in need. Luckily, me and my sister got the new home, and my mother got the medical care that she desperately needed, and our life started to change for better again. Rukpa even supported my mother with a small tea shop in Kathmandu, which unfortunately after three years had to be closed because she started facing harassment from the drunk people. I was 13 years old, on my school break, we went to village and asked my father for a land where my mother could stay and farm. He refused at first, but some of the villagers and elders of the community came to our support and we got the land. I was really happy to be back again. My mother would teach me to grow different kind of crops, different kind of vegetables, and I really enjoyed working with her. There was this joy. But every passing year, when I go to village, I would notice youth were slowly disappearing from the land. The village, where I once had the memories of happy farmer growing their crops and sharing the tradition, was no more a reality. My country, Nepal, which once used to be known as exporter of food, now export youth as cheap labor. Every day, more than 1,300 people leave the country. They take high interest from the loans are, and from being in their own house with their loved one, they are being cramped with eight other migrant workers in a tiny room. We have moderate climate in the hill, of average temperature, let's say around 25 degrees. But they have to endure working in 50 degrees harsh condition. The freedom and dignity that they have back home are snatched away as they face discrimination, abuse, 
and served jail for minor transgression. And some, unable to suffer and all this hardship, they get hooked on alcohol. And sadly, some never returns. While constructing the FIFA Stadium in Qatar, more than 500 Nepalese died. And every day, more than three dead bodies of migrant workers are being brought back to Nepal. Back in my village, Arukharka, the once fertile land has been degraded because of the excessive use of chemical, and it has been pushing the farmer away from their land. The village now becomes a place for elderly and children only. Something really has to be done in order to bring hope to the land and to the people. Deep inside, I always wish to do something for the community that once let us down. Our organization, Asa Bhumi, which means hope through land, wants to transform this situation. We work with youth to develop their love for home reason and make them passionate in organic farming. We envision a future where all the farmer can thrive in their own ancestral land, cultivating with dignity and with pride. We have four hectares of land in the hill, which now lies abandoned, as you can see. We'll transform this land into a thriving farm, which will be a model for local farmer. Here, we'll conduct our pilot project. We'll invite youth from low earning background and people who have returned from foreign employment. We consider our participant potential seed that can thrive with right support. So we take them through four phases of sprouting, seedlings, growing, and harvesting. They will start sprouting when we add to their existing knowledge of farming and introduce wider possibilities and advantages of organic farming. They become seedlings while gaining the knowledge in soil, water, and pest management. They will learn about crop diversification and rotation. They will make their own compost, and they will learn about the greenhouse to grow different kind of crops in winter. Next is growing. They start growing when we uh, give them all the skill and that they taste all this skill in their farm. Here, they will also learn about value addition in the food so that they can increase their income as well as add to the food security. And the final is harvesting. It's the time for real action. Our participant would start working in their own farm. Together with our team, we'll make, uh, evaluate their soil quality, water availability, and climatic condition and design a suitable farm for them so that they can maximize profit. This journey will help young farmers to grow crops more organically and become passionate in farming. We'll not stop there. In the years to come, we want to revive all the simple ways of living by reviving the indigenous knowledge where nature would provide all the basic necessities. Imagine, after the harvest season, Rice straw that are unused would be used to make a beautiful mat. Trees and basket would be made from bamboos. Grass would be used to make nice rope. Because we would like to replace all the cheap plastic materials that are now in our village. Asabumi will further brand this product and uh, increase the income generating part in the community. Youth in Arukarka think that there is no other way to prosper than to leave their home, travel smile away, and just to earn the bare minimum. But Asabumi affords an alternative to stay in their own hand, land while cultivating, connecting with nature and families, to take charge of our own destiny while making our community more prosperous. As philosopher Seneca said, it is not the man who has too little but a man who craves more that is poor. Thank you.